Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me here. My name is uh, Mr. Mucklever, and we will continue our United Kingdom Imperial Federation Imperial Protection Alliance campaign. So, uh, I forgot to show you, you guys some states in the Benelux, and we'll start off with the Dutch state. Uh, someone requested this, of course it's learned by Bernhard of the Netherlands, national populace in the Stahl Pact with upwards of 800,000 men, that's not too bad. Next up is the Kingdom of Belgium, le led by King Albert I, sanctioning Germany, new supply system, spirit of freedom, Less than 200,000 manpower, and they're by themselves, okay? And of course, the good old uh, Republic of Luxembourg, led by Pierre Dupont. Wow, that's, kind of, that's a lot of manpower for uh, Luxembourg. So, I think, are they in any alliance? They're pretty divided, they're social conservative, but they're so fairly divided. Uh, let's see, since we showed uh, the Dutch state, we must also show you the Kingdom of the Netherlands, led by Queen Wilhelmina. Ah, uh, yes. Not much manpower. Really not much manpower, but it shall be sufficient enough. Also, someone also said that they were a Spanish subscriber, which is great, and they asked if Carlos Spain was in this game. I'll be completely honest, I don't know that much about Carlism, or Carlos supporters, or the Civil Wars. I looked it up on Wikipedia and a couple other sites. I want to say no. There's four major factions in Spain. Obviously, the second Spanish Republic you know, succeeded this time, they're social conservatives, and that's obviously not a monarchy. Uh, let's see, we had Falanga Spain, but those are authoritarians, really authoritarian national populists. Let's see, Spanish Popular Front was the collectivists, <clears throat> and then we had the monarchists, the Kingdom of Spain, but I don't think they are uh, Carlos, because they were based down here in Extremadura, as well as Anadolcia, Granada, and Yen. I don't think that they're monarchists, I, or they're at least they're not Carlists. They're still monarchists, but they were down here. I think the Carlists were more based up here in more northern Spain, especially in Galicia. So I don't think we have Carlist Spain in this game. Maybe we do. I don't know. I checked the Wikipedia page as well, or the wiki for the fandom of Furreich, and there was nothing on there as well. So, so there's really not much else I can do about it. So uh, I forgot to show you guys all the broken up states of the former Indian Raj, or British Raj, which is now down in Ceylon. Of course, he's still led by Lord Linthingo. So, the Indian People's Republic, which we will first li liberate our peoples from, or retain control, is Indian People's Republic, led by Sh Shuripad Amrit Dang, Libertarian Socialist, and he's got a really freaking creepy picture. Wow. Yet, Spirit of Freedom. Alright, and next one is Bihar, led by... Ooh, that's, that's really nice. I like the little uh, topping to his head and uh, clothes. Aditya Pratap Singh, I think it's Singh, Norisa, Orissa, led by Biswanath Das, oh, and their paternal autocrats, Bihar, our paternal autocrats, and of course I said Indian People's Republic, our libertarian socialists. The Provisional India is led by the Taj Mahal, also known as the Provisional Government, and their authoritarian Democrats, Hyderabad, is led by Osman Ali Khan, hmm, you seem familiar. And the paternal autocrats, Madras is paternal autocrats led under Yeshwantrao Gorpad, Gorpad. Uh, Trans Travancore is led by CTBV. I'm not going to even try to pronounce the name, but he is a paternal autocrat. Mysore is led by paternal autocrat Krishna Raja Wadiyarvi IV. And Bombay, I like your hat, man, is led by Jamnadal Bajaj. I know I messed that up. And Rajasthan, led by uh, Man Singh the second. Of course, there's a lot of paternal autocrats here. Of course, I mean they are princes and kings. It's an interesting flag, very interesting flag, and it looks like that crown is like not on his head correctly. Anyways, uh, let's see, Baluchistan. Whoa, this guy's he's he's serious. He's got sunglasses on. He's very serious. His name is Ahmad Yar Khan, paternal autocrat. Punjab is led by Sadiq Muhammad Khan V, paternal autocrat, and of course everyone's favorite location, especially in today's world, hotly contested by both India, Pakistan, and China, paternal autocrat, paternal autocrat Hari Singh. They're all the same last name, but at least they have a relatively similar flag to what we know Kashmir as today. Let's see, your yeah, your horses. What's your width? Twenty width. We need to make them forty width, but I don't have enough. Uh, power or anything like that. So, let's continue. Uh, also, I just want to let you guys know that I am trying to play as an extremely hawkish 
militaristic, jingoist, British monarch. Like, I am gung-ho for restoring everything in the world to British power. Like, if there's a place that is not under British land, it will be under our British land, either directly through rule from London or through indirectly as a puppet state. So that's that's my whole playthrough right now. Uh, ooh, competing machines done. Is this Philippines? Philippines. Who is Philippines? Basilio Valdez. Uh, authoritarian Democrat. All right, cool. Uh, competing machine, 1938. Decryption, encryption. Those are what I'm going to do next. But let's just double check here. No, no, no. Doing logistic companies, which is good. Let's go ahead and get some. Uh, let's get some encryption first. So, I've been playing some of the Great War mod. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Kind of a little difficult at times. Uh, let's see. Great War mod. I I had some extremely massive naval battles. because I was playing as the German Empire. Oh, but let's talk about this. A launching of the 8th RMS Queen Elizabeth. Uh, for the past two years, the John Brown and Company Shipyard in Clydebank, Scotland, has been hard at work designing an improved version of the RMS Queen Mary. An ocean liner with only, which only recently performed its maiden voyage in May of 1936. The RMS Queen Elizabeth was designed to be a much improved version of her sister ship with additional deck and cargo space as well as increased passenger service. Wow. At midday today, the Queen herself performed the launching ceremony and the Queen, uh, the ship, has been set, sent for fitting out. It will be still some time before she conducts her maiden voyage as numerous engine tests are required. But the RMS Queen Elizabeth is once again more proof, if any more were needed. Oh, the skills of British craftsmanship in the area of naval construction. Great. Good job. Too bad I didn't get a natural ship out of it for military use. Ooh. Ah, yes. Well, you know what I like to see? I like to see the British Empire, or at least the United Kingdom, have a little bit of manpower. Even if we are have our total effective total manpower modifier to half percent. To 50 percent. Ah, we just lifted interest caps. That hurt us even more. Let's see. The purge would be cool. Get more stability. The barb. What's a barb? Rebellion. Get rid of the rebe rebels. Uh, we need to liberate the markets, which will take forever. Actually, what's my. Uh, I don't think party popularity really does anything in this game. It's just war support. Um, let's see. Stability affected by ruling party popularity, of course. 0%. Eh, whatever. Let's go ahead and try to liberate the markets as fast as possible. With this, we'll get. We will be positive with political power, which would be great, so we can start attacking our former Indian subcontinent. Get more stability, we will gain the, we will get economic instability for a year, we gain the national spirit of liberated markets, which you can read in the green text, uh, remove London market collapse, replace splendid isolation with isolation, which will help us out immensely. Alright, so this will take literally half a year to get done, which is absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. And we still can't build anything. So my goal right now is once we get enough political power, we will attack India, or what was British Raj. And then uh, doing that, having said that, what we will need to do is, of course, build more defenses. But we will need to uh, get more military XP or army XP so I can work around my division battalions because right now they're not very strong. Since I went mass assault, my divisions are extremely weak compared, well, I don't want to say extremely weak, but pretty weak compared to, like, superior firepower. Uh, I would say Grand Battle Plan is better in terms of raw numbers against mass assault. Basically, everything is better than mass assault. I just went mass assault purely for the manpower. That's literally it. Oh, and we lost our uh, bad national spirit, East African Flames, which is great. Uh, I want to talk about mass assault a little bit. So, mass assault just gives me more population. It's easier to train soldiers. At the uh, out of supply and supply grace hours goes up, it's better, we get a little bit more entrenchment and organization. I'm going to go under mass mobilization because even though mass charge isn't great, effective partisans we will never use, we get better, uh, quite a bit better infantry recovery rate, be slightly better reinforced rate, a little more organization, but we get 5% more recruitable population on top of what we already have, 15% reinforced rate, and we can stack, I think, two more infantry battalions in our divisions, which would be great. As well as, I guess, we have more recovery rate, out of supply, and effective for partisans, even though deep battle would be interesting. Last supply consumption would be actually extremely good. I really love that. Tanks, that doesn't really do very much. You get blitz, but whatever. More planning, reinforced speed. Uh, you get overwhelming fire. Supply 
consumption goes down by 15%, which is pretty good, and you still get infantry combat width. Overall, firepower is okay. You get more breakthrough with this. Uh, let's see, mechanized. That's not bad. Backhand blow. You know, as much as I love, I mean, this itself, vast offenses versus human wave offense, the only thing that's stopping me is I got I want that 5% more manpower. Because supply consumption is so good. Huh. Should I go with mass mobilization or deep battle? Because I'm going to already get 3%. And when I do annex my puppets, I'm going to get even more manpower. Maybe I should do that. Because I'm just doing this for the manpower. And reinforce rate's great and all. But 30% minus supply consumption? Man, you could land like 60 with tanks on like a level 1 port for a beachhead. Probably not, but you know. I don't know. I'm going to need the manpower, though. Hmm. What what uh, level am I on? I'm currently on volunteer only, so that would make sense. Hmm. Currently 46 million people, core population. Uh, am I building anything yet? I am not. Let's go ahead and get a little more political power. Get this done as fast as possible. Mean popularity. Let's see. No negative modifiers yet. That's pretty good. Consumer goods is not very good, but you know. General Jack Churchill gives us more attack and recovery weight, so that's fine. Uh, at least they don't have too many soldiers on the border, which is good. We're just kind of killing time here. And let's see. At least we got rid of the Kenya problem. Especially with France and interfering with our Kenyan issues. Ah, uh, France. Oh, God, why? Why, God, why? Why did you have to give birth to the French? Why did the French have to exist? So, French Republic, what are, the, what are you doing currently? You're doing Muslim institutions. Uh, in defense of the Fatherland, Officers Defense Council, they're doing Muslim institutions because they're going to focus on racism instead of sexism. And that'll give them more political power, stability, and then, oh wow, more daily political power and non-core manpower, plus 15%. That is quite a bit. Successful government. Sure, successful government. Equal France, but yet they are still sexist. Whatever. Uh, what is Germany up to? And, of course, that happened. No one cares about the rails, just saying. They're doing conscription. Let's see, they purged Democratic Sympathizers, they expand the TST. Uh, they did not keep Hitler, they chose Strasser. Volksgemeinschaft, Pan-Germanism Policy, Valkuskun Austria. Oh, I see what you're doing, Germany. I see what you feel like. You want to go against me? What? What? Alright, I mean, so be it. I'm not going to feel bad when I have to <clears throat> declare war on you. Do I have three research slots? No, just two. Okay, cool. That I didn't choose from yet. All right, it's 1939. Uh, let's go get dispersed output as well as better guns. Guns are going to be extremely important. Obviously, guns are always going to be important. But I'm surprised that actually German Reich decided to go with an anti-British policy. Yes, we were enemies in the Great War, but a lot of people were enemies in the Great War. You know, I mean, I think the French are a bunch of dicks right now. So, I mean, I would probably ally with the German Reich if I wasn't going to be completely isolationist. That's just me. Oh, my lord. What is this? André Malraux, the knife in the letter. A controversial tale by the French writer André Malraux, set on a future timeline, has recently reached the shelves of France, depicting a scenario of a new world order after the Second Great War. Uh oh The story is a dystopian tale set in 1962, featuring an American man surviving in the divided Midwest in a world locked in a nuclear stalemate. What's nuclear stuff? In this timeline, the German Reich goes to war with and successfully defeats the Entente and takes control of Western Europe. In the Eastern Front, as chaos divides the Russians, the Soviet Union too falls very quickly, causing the Stahl Pact to dominate all of the European continent. Meanwhile, in the New World, a disunited and ill United States falls through the re revanchist Mexican state. Uh, the federal government collapses and splinter states arise in North America, and then the rising Mexico begins to establish its sphere of influence in the New World. It comes into conflict with the British Empire and the Caribbean, leading to a joint war with Germany against the British. The war slows down into a grinding naval stalemate until Germany creates the ultimate weapon, powdered, powdered, powered by the atom itself. After the Mexican bombing of Jamaica and Bar Barbuda, Bermuda, you mean? Yeah. Uh, with this nuclear weapon, what the hell is a nuclear weapon? The British finally accept to negotiate a peace, granting Germany several of its colonial positions overseas and giving Mexico control of the Caribbean. Give me a moment, I'm going to drink some coffee. Ah, coffee. 
As the New World Order is established, German-Mexican relationships break, as well as the Stahlpact collapses as Germany oversteps its boundaries, causing widespread resentment up until economic crises, or crises cause it to isolate itself. The British then begin ignoring the peace treaty terms and challenging the Reich's influence in the world. Thus, by 1962, the world is locked in a nucle nuclear... We keep using that word. What the hell is a nuclear? Uh, stalemate between the German Reich, the Greater Mexican State, and the British Empire, all looking to be the dominant world power. The novel ends with the beginning of a new nuclear crisis as the Mexicans set up a missile base in their allied territory near the Great Lakes, threatening Canada and causing the worldwide panic as the British prepare to deal with this aggression. While many criticize the book for its huge gaps in plausibility and exaggerated proposals of future technology, the gripping political tension that wraps every part of the story has led it to great success amongst all the Entente. Since when is pseudo-science fiction so popular? Jeez, guys. What a childish fantasy. Alright, alright. Good, good, good. Uh, our manpower keeps going down because actually we keep producing a lot of militia for, uh... It's not militia. Wait a second. Yeah, that's lightnings. We keep producing militia for colonial garrisons, which I will have to give supply support companies and stuff. And other railroad Irish bombing. No one gives a shit. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, our colonial garrisons are not very strong. They're literally just... Militia. What would happen if I change into infantry? Supply would go up by 0 .03. Less recovery rate, more organization, four more organization, five more HP, a little more soft attack, a little more hard attack, a little more defense, a little more breakthrough. Uh, you actually get some piercing, but infantry equipment goes up by a little bit and way more training time. Hmm. I do need to change that eventually. Oh, wait. Oh! I guess Germany has somehow taken the, the Sudetenland. Oh! Huh. Alright, oh, and we just finished Defense in Death. So, here's, I know we're only halfway through this video, but I'm not going to research any more land options until the next episode. Why? Because I was thinking about this while I was reading that huge long text about childish fantasy of pseudo-science fiction. Should I go down mass mobilization for deep battles? So I'm going to slowly go over each one of these again for mass mobilization and then deep battles. First one is mass mobilization. You can slowly read the effects of what we get. Large front offensive. Human wave offensive, which is really, really good. And then guerrilla warfare. Obviously, it'll take much shorter time to finish mass mobilization than deep battle. Deep battle has the following stuff. Uh, large front operations. Deep operations. Operational concentration. Fast defenses, which is pretty good. Offensives. Breakthrough Priority, which is pretty good, especially because we need tanks. Mechanized Wave, which will be good for tanks again. And then a Continuous Offensive Zone. Since we're not going to be in a major war, I want you to tell me, should I go Deep Battle or Mass Mobilization? Obviously, against the Indian States, I'm not going to be too worried about them winning too much when they can't even fill out their entire front line with soldiers, especially with soldiers that are very extremely weak at the moment. So... Please leave a comment below on your which way we should go. Wow. Did they just take something else? Maybe not. Maybe I'm just thinking things. Transcaucasia is actually looking pretty, pretty big. Yep. And of course, let's see. Does this episode do Does this place have its own thing? Uh, let's see. They're going to Galicia. Oh, they did Sudetenland and Silesia compromise. Uh, and then they're doing the Galicia compromise. So we move Polish unrest, private visitation. For visitation. My god, my words are going wrong. They're looking for allies. Territorial gains. Uh, Latin friends, Western arms, they seek industrial health, continental entente, under the wings of the eagle. Seed Galicia. Which one is Galicia? North Nitra, Moravia, Bohemia, Eastern Sudetenland. Oh, and we have finally, thank god, liberated our markets. Western Slovakia, yeah. Cool, so this is actually extremely great. We finally did it. We finally got... Wow, look at all that political power. Wow. We get a little bit more stability. We get, of course, economic instability, which sucks. But we get liberated markets as well as we're now just isolation. Great. Mm. Wow, we actually, we actually have factories, guys. Wow. So let's go ahead and choose a new focus for us. Uh, we could begin integrating the Irish. Mm -hmm. Got a little coffee. We could do Imperial Burdens, actually. We get peacetime 
demobilization. Uh, I'm going to do that, even though we do get the National Spirit of Imperial Burden, which gives us 5% less stability, less improved relations opinion, but we get better am amphibious invasion speed, division attrition, division training time, and war support. I think that would be extremely good to go under because peacetime de uh, demobilization is, I wouldn't say quite a bit better, but quite a bit better than isolationist, and it only takes a week. So since we've a little bit of political power, we would need to do this. Oh, and we have to do Imperial Burdens anyways to prepare the Reconquest. So, that works out actually perfectly. Uh, let's see. With political power, I do want to help my allies out here. So they'll like me, hopefully, a little bit more. But we may need to do some things. Alright, so Land Doctrine. Do we not have anyone that can give us daily XP gain? That's, that sucks. Uh, day... Industrial research time, resource efficiency gain, refinery construction speed. Ooh, civilian and military construction speed. That's going to be extremely, extremely important. I'm going to do that because uh, our goal, I was trying to say earlier, is to build an, ex an extreme amount of civilian factories so that we can always be continually building more and more and we'll run out of things to build by the end of the game, of course, so that if we need more military factories, we can produce them within a month. If we need 20 more, we can produce them within, you know, six months. Whatever. So we're going to focus really heavily on building enough civilian factories. Now, I want at least three rows, 45, 45 civilian factories to be working on something at all times. So once we get three full lines of 15 factories, then I'll produce some military factories as well, probably. If you don't understand what I just said, don't worry, I'll get it. You'll understand soon enough. Let's see. And I don't think I can really do much else with this political power. Uh, I could do this, but I only get half a day, and I want to save it for the the uh, Imperial Burden's Reconquest of India, which we will start this episode. All right, let's go ahead and double check our planes. Create a London area. Oh, you're already down here. Would you look at that? Odds are they probably don't have planes, and we have just finished. Imperial burdens. Let's see, naval conference. That takes 28 days. 70. I don't. I don't want to do 70. Seizing the Panama Canal. Strategically important in Central America. We seize it by force. Hmm. I'm gonna wait. Uh, London naval con. I don't know. That doesn't seem very interesting. We don't. We can not focus on that for now. Uh, what are we going to do? We could do integration, but that takes 70 days. Political control. Uh, freedom for the Dominions. Better research times. And they would like us better if we did that. Let's do this, the Purge. We already did the military junta. Churchill's voice roared through the halls of Westminster as the trials began. The Prime Minister and several other prominent members of Parliament were dragged before a military tribunal and quickly found guilty of high treason and complicity in the murder of several hundred British citizens. Their hanging would be scheduled for dawn on the morrow. Awesome! Well, not awesome for them, but we will begin our reconquest of our former British Raj. Alright, we gave him a day. Oh, we're actually suffering from having too many people here. Wow, we actually have 30 divisions. Six. Uh, let's see, we have six guys. Where are we going to send them? Uh, we could send them down here, but that's kind of hard to invade. Maybe we should try to invade anyways. Let's see, let's put you under... I'm going to put them under you, why not? We'll put them all under him for now. Uh, you guys go right ahead. You guys go right ahead when you can. It is infantry with 20 with infantry, so that's good. You, take like half of you, you will invade from here to there. We'll do our best. We will need to recall our navy. We're going to go ahead and declare war on uh, Bengal, also known as Eastern India, or also known as Indian People's Republic. Oh. Let's go and do that. And I don't believe we really need to call our allies in, except for the Raj, but not yet. We'll do that next time. Good. Oh, and I guess you guys can stop sucking on that infantry. Go down there. You can stop doing that. Good. Uh, I'll take, yeah, take half of you guys. Just go straight here. Take another half and go straight... 
there to there and cut these guys off, even though they're not going to be very difficult to take out. Nice. Got a little more army XP. I like it. Oh, and looks like we got some more infantry. Good. We're going to need a lot of infantry. And I'll probably have to make them 40 width, so. Let's see. Uh, and yeah, you, you go up there. Good. Decryption's done. 1939. Uh, let's get construction speed. That's going to be extremely important. You guys move up. You guys move up. You, know, you might as well come up there. Uh, horses. Can they win? They might be able to win. Now, they are attacking across the river, which isn't good. Yeah, you guys just kind of hang out. Uh, I know you're only 20 width without our... Mostly without artillery. But you guys should be able to do fairly well. And it looks like we have uh, quite a bit more infantry. That's good. Oh, and we, our guys are ready to go whenever, so we will tell them to go when they can. Now, I will have to declare war, but, you know, whatever. Alright, you guys. I need you to go, like, like extreme. Like, let's get... Let's, let's take our country back. Or, you know, our former area back. Right, you guys just go here. Cut these guys off. Or kill them, or whatever. You know. You know how to deal with them. You know how to deal with rebels. We've dealt with rebels before. This is the second time in already our short campaign of trying to get rid of Indian rebels. Indian revolters. They disgust me. And we have another Empire Day. Great. Great, 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 great. Uh, casualty report 170 versus 26,000. And industrial sabotage in Ireland. Oh well. And we just finished the Purge, which has lowered the popularity of pretty much everyone else except us. We gain more stability. And I can't remember what these do. Establish the bar. I can't remember that. Radicalism hides in shadows. We need to root them out. I think that's like our own like intelligence agency. I think. Yeah, go straight for Calcutta. And the Brotherhood targets RIC. We lose a little bit all that political power from the games. Or not the games, but whatever it was we did. And we should have this wrapped up very, very soon. Good. Good. They're, they're attacking like crazy. And we did that all by ourselves. And thus, the one episode I showed you where who led Bengal or the Indian People's Republic, they have swiftly been crushed. And let's go and do that and that. Let's see. You. We lack sufficient intel. Oh, we need our ships. Guys, what are you... Are you even trying to get down here? Uh, well, they're going to get down there anyways. Let's see you. Uh, focus on this area. And you, we should should be good enough to just do this by ourselves. And we have free dock areas, but not really. You'll see why in just a little bit. Is there anything good here? Eh, I'm going to save my political power up because we need to save it up. And we have we will return our territory to the Viraj. Very good. Which has eh, not bad infrastructure, surprisingly. So since we have 32 man, 32 army experience, let's go ahead and change some stuff up here. Let's see. Logistics, I always do logistics and recon. That'll definitely help our soldiers out. Uh, since we're doing that anyways. Uh, armor divisions, that's not bad, but not great. We definitely need to be ready for our uh tanks when we want to produce them. Uh, let's see, supply, you know, let's put in supply company first, that'll help us out. Oh, and that really hurt everything, ooh. Uh, let's see, militia, you're doing great, yeah, you're good, you should be on low priority. Get our soldiers up there, they're missing some equipment, most notably, whatever I just added in, which includes motorized and support equipment. Oh god. Oh, we're not even producing motorized. Put you at the top, take one of you off. Yeah, when you do that, that looks pretty good. I could do really more military factories, but who could not else? Uh, I'm not going to try to get more political power just because we need to produce as many factories as possible. Uh, let's see, actually, we have air bases now, so let's put you up here. And we'll continue to do Eastern India. And you guys look pretty ready to go. Go ahead and declare war. Call our allies in because we need to move, need to be able to move through the Raj itself. Our ships are being stupid and they're not sure what is going on in their lives. And we're going to go right ahead. 
Should have been great. Go ahead and try to invade. We need to declare war as well. Oh, never mind. They have formed an alliance, a faction, called the Princely Pact. That's okay. We'll take everyone else out first, and then we'll attack them from all sides. And it looks like our infantry are doing very, very well. Our allies want to send us stuff. You know what? Thank you, allies. I appreciate that, because I really need a lot more stuff. Ah, we established the barb. So, the barb, this will be the last two things we do, the, the event, and the annexation of Bihar. So, the barb. One thing that has become clear in the past months following the end of the Manchester's workers' crisis. The crisis would have never been able to reach the height that it did without interference from known provocateurs. I'm assuming France or the Russian SSR. The failure of the democratic governments preceding our own rule are clear. They willingly allowed subversive elements to roam free on the streets of Britain, and sow the seeds of discord in our nation in order to secure ourselves from the possibility of further calamity. We must establish a new organization to root out the Machiavellian elements of our great nation, who only wish to see it destroyed. Churchill has thus, and remember this is Jack Churchill, has thus been careful to move forward with the reforms to prevent further unrest, but he has placed special interest in the creation of the British Anti-Revolutionary Brigade, also known as BARB, to secure our new government and protect Britain from further harm. Poised to begin operations in a week's time, the BARB is comprised of mainly ex-military men whose loyalties are unquestionable. Today, Jack stands at the ready to sign the BARB into law. So he has MI6, or MI5, more than adequate to carry out defense, or we do this. Establish this new organization, give them leave to defend Britain from traitors within. So we lose daily vanguard support, daily collective support, daily libertarian socialist support, and we get daily political power. That sounds very good to me. We will annex the Bihar. <clears throat> Take a quick look. Pause it. At who is in the princely pact. All right. Uh, next up, what we will have to do. We could either fight the entire princely pact, and then of course, as a Punjab up there. Yeah, I think we'll have to fight the Princely Pact first. And they have quite a few divisions. Quite a few. Uh, let's see. That horse has four. That's not bad. Um, but if we do launch another in invasion with 12 divisions, that's not that's going to be pretty good since we'll have most of the divisions up north. We'll declare war on them next. Because if I attack India, it's going to be impossible to get to this side. But they do have their capital here. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Maybe we'll attack them next. Maybe we'll do that. Since they're not in any sort of organization. Yeah, we'll do that. Let's figure out their next focus. Uh, Plan J, maybe? <clears throat> Soldiers' education. Uh, British Army reforms. Army reforms sound like they could really help us out. So let's do that one next. And we'll call it an episode right now. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, we have begun striking back into India. Reclaiming the Raj for ourselves. And we have finally gotten rid of the London market collapsed national spirit, and we have gained liberated markets, which is extremely, extremely good. So guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave a like. Please leave a comment below. I really, really want you to leave a comment below whether we should go under uh, mass mobilization or deep battle. Uh, I'll look at your comments below, and I'll probably choose which one we're going to do tomorrow. And like I said, I hope you liked the video. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching.